Hello, I hope you're keeping well. Uh, this is part two of a two-part video I am doing all about my skincare routine morning and evening in terms of managing my rosacea. If you've already watched part one, brilliant. I'm going to uh, continue where I left off, which is with moisturisers. And if you're new to this video, do have a look at part one first. You'll either find it on my Instagram page at Rose Gallagher, or you can find it on my blog. Again, if you just Google Rose Gallagher, that'll come up nice and easily. And um, maybe watch the first part before you join me here. Um, just in case you are joining for the first time and you want to join me at this point, I'm just sharing some recommendations about rosacea prone skin. Everyone's skin is different, so I would really recommend if you are experiencing rosacea like symptoms or you know you have rosacea, that you speak to a medical professional who can advise you on your skin and your needs. Um, and this is designed to just give you a bit of an idea of what's working for me and hopefully inspire you in terms of some textures, methods, brands, things like that. Okay, so where we left off, it's the morning, I've cleansed, I've used my vitamin C, I'm now going in with a moisturiser. What I tend to do during the day is keep things as light as possible. So the La Roche-Posay Sensitive Fluid is a really light consistency. It's almost like a gel. I wear a lot of makeup most days, um, so I need something lightweight that isn't going to feel too heavy under the rest of my makeup. That's usually more than enough for me. However, what I like about the Telerian range in particular is that there are loads of different textures. So for example, the Rich Sensitive Cream is a slightly more buttery formula that you can build up to that is just going to give you that extra bit of comfort. So one of the things that I would say to you, um, this is another reason why whenever anyone says, what would you recommend me to use in terms of a cleanser or a moisturiser? Everyone prefers different textures, so I wouldn't want to say for sure, but just know that at La Roche-Posay, they have textures to suit everybody in terms of how rich or how light you like to go. The one I've been using at the moment is the Kate Somerville Delicate. Um, the texture of this one is, it's a little bit like uh, buttery icing is what I would say. Now it's a lovely rich cream and it leaves a soft cushiony balm I would say. Your makeup goes on beautifully over it and I would say for a rich cream you can actually put your makeup on quite quickly over it. Um, but it's nice and comforting I would say is the texture of that one. But anyway, every single day, no matter what else is going on, I have cleansed and I've moisturised. Then in the mornings, I always, I don't know why I'm shaking it, you have to shake it before you use it. I always use the Anthelios SPF. This is really runny, it's SPF 50. Um, I use a separate one on my neck and things like that because I don't want that to run out really easily and it doesn't because the formula is thin and runny but equally I don't like to waste it on my neck so I just use that all over my face and then I take um, a big body spray SPF to do my neck, chest, shoulders, anything else that's on show. Um, there is also a tinted version of this, which is fantastic if you have a warmer complexion and uh, it doesn't leave a tint on the skin, but the tint that's in there kind of eliminates the risk of any kind of white cast on the skin. So I really, really like the Anthelios. Okay, so that is morning complete. One of the things that I want to also show you is the Kate Somerville Dry Skin Saver. If you're dry, um, I am absolutely amazed by this. It's one of the best things I've ever used. And I don't say that lightly because I know that someone will go and treat themselves to this off the back of this recommendation. I, It's brilliant. Um, the Dry Skin Saver, it's a moisturiser that's designed for face, body, lips. Use it everywhere. Um, it's very, very rich but it does absorb, even though it's so rich and comforting, it will sink in. I would definitely leave a bit of time if you're going to put makeup over it, but you can do that. But how this transforms dry or flaky skin is, I've not used anything as good as this. 
What I love about it is usually with things that are really designed for those extra dry skins, they leave a bit of a residue or they're thick or they're very, very rich to the point that you can't really put much else over them. This is just as rich and just as powerful, but it will completely sink in. Um, it's been a long while since I've been as floored by something, but it really works. And what I like about it is I've been using a very hearty dose of it for quite some time and I'm nowhere near run out. Um, when I first started using this, my skin just felt a bit sandpapery. I don't know if you ever get that, but it felt very um, coarse to the touch, if that's the right word. And I like that even on a normal day, you can slot it on as your moisturiser and it'll give you that intense moisture, but it won't feel heavy. Um, I used this last night and the difference I felt this morning was brilliant. I like that I can just dip into it when I need it and I don't need to use it every day because it does what it needs to do and then you can go back to your usual routine. So if dryness is your issue, can't recommend this enough. Fragrance free, lovely. Okay, nighttime moisturiser. A majority of the time, I'm just going to cleanse like I already have explained. I'm going to um, use a moisturiser, any of the moisturisers that I've already explained. Sometimes I make different tweaks depending on what my skin is going to need. So if I want to exfoliate, I don't do it every day. I would say I probably exfoliate once a week. Um, sometimes not even that. It just depends on how the texture is in my skin. I personally use these Dr. Dennis Grace peel pads in the um, lightest strength. There's a number of different strengths in these. This is the super gentle one. This is a two part peel. So part number one, you, you open this and you've got a little pad in here that's already pre-soaked in formula. Part number one, you rub all over your skin for two full minutes and then you leave it for two minutes to do its work and exfoliate. And then part number two, just balances everything again. So rather than leaving your skin in this exfoliated state, this says, okay, we've done our job now, let's take you back to normal, let's neutralize everything. I think that's why I get on so well with them. As per Dr. Emma Wedgworth, who's, <laughs> I've completely fallen over her name. As per Dr. Emma Wedgworth's suggestion, uh, she said to me, never use any active ingredients when your skin is flaring up. If it's playing up, just leave it, just do the bare minimum, cleanse, moisturise, use your SPF, that's it. If it's playing up, I stay away from this. If everything's behaving quite nicely and I want to uh, improve the brightness, the texture of my skin, I'll use one of these, fantastic. In the evening also, as long as everything's behaving. I mean, this wouldn't ma matter too much if it wasn't behaving, but I've been using the SkinCeuticals HA Intensifier Serum. This is a hyaluronic acid. Um, hyaluronic acid is great for retaining moisture and it'll help to retain any moisture that I'm putting on any additional, um, from any additional skincare. Again, this is not the cheapest hyaluronic acid. I think it's brilliant. I really do enjoy using this, but there are other options. Um, have a look at the Pestle and Mortar Hyaluronic Serum. I think it's great. I've just ordered the Ordinary Hyaluronic to give that a go. I believe that's in the region of five pounds. I cannot emphasize enough. I really believe in all of these things, but I know I'm very lucky to work in the beauty industry and get to try them. Please don't feel like you have to shell out an absolute fortune to get results because you don't. This is the serum I'm using at the moment. I really find a great benefit from it. Uh, my skin feels more hydrated. It doesn't irritate um, if I am having a flare up and I want to use it. However, just for the sake of stripping things back and keeping things really simple, if I am flared up, I'll avoid this. But most of the time I slot this um, after my cleanser and before the rest of my skincare. Now, um, another product to show you from the same brand, SkinCeuticals, Epidermal Repair. This is a really specialised treatment for if your skin is, essentially it's designed to repair the barrier and um, help to soothe any redness and just build the strength of that skin back. If I'm having a really bad flare up, this is what I'll come to. And rather than use it all over the face, I'll just use it specifically in very sensitised areas. 
for a number of reasons. This is not the cheapest product in the world by any means, and so I don't want to waste it. But also, I feel like the rest of my skincare does a good enough job of the rest of my skin. And this is really great at targeting those areas that need extra special help. Um, a couple of other things that I really like, the Triple Lipid Restore, full of ceramides. It's a moisturiser from SkinCeuticals. You can use it twice a day, a really lovely creamy texture that just moisturises and helps to repair the skin. If I'm having a really, oh my gosh, what's happened here flare up, they have the Phyto Corrective Mask, which is a green jelly. I will sleep in this. I'll just put a layer of it on and go to bed. Even though it's a slimy jelly, <laughs> it does um, sink into the skin quite quickly. So you're not left with a load of slime on your pillow. It's very calming. It's very, uh, I mean, instantly the texture of it is quite cooling on the skin. Um, but it will really calm things down and help. I'm just having a look at what else I need to show you. If it's a tan night, I mix a few of these James Reed drops into my moisturiser, whichever moisturiser I've gone for, which at the moment is predominantly my Kate Somerville. Put it all into my hand, moisturiser ready, drops ready. Do a bit of this and then massage it gently in all along the neck as well, working upwards when I do the neck. Um, just while we're talking AM and PM routine, I always use a lip balm before bed. Elizabeth Art and Eight Hour Cream is always by my bed. Um, I also love the Lana Lips balms. I've always got them by my bed. Um, I've got loads of lip balms. I just love anything for keeping my lips hydrated. And I also think that that's a great time to use your lip balm before bed. I know this sounds really obvious, but during the day, you're making a loads of cup of tea. You are having your lunch. You're doing this, that and the other. Whereas bedtime, a nice thick layer of that has just got all the time in the world to get to work. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I can't always be bothered to use an eye cream. If you're going to use an eye cream, I really like the CeraVe eye cream. Uh, simple, does the job, um, you know, lovely. I really like the Telerian eye cream from La Roche-Posay. A lot of the time I can't be bothered. I do get quite dry around my eyes. So if I'm feeling especially dry, I will make a conscious effort to use that. But it's not always the way. Um, but to summarise, essentially, even though I do mix and match things, I predominantly um, use things that are fragrance free, keep things quite simple. I don't like to do too many steps. Morning is for cleanser, moisturiser, SPF sometimes a vitamin C. Evening is for cleanser, moisturiser, sometimes my hyaluronic acid, uh, sometimes an exfoliant. I don't personally use any retinol at the moment. I would like to. Um, I'm waiting to speak to um, a skin professional once we're on the other side of this situation. Um, I'm in no hurry to investigate that at the moment. It's something that can wait in my case. Um, Oh, one other thing, I do live a mist and I really like the Zellens Z Balance. This is the one I've been using at the moment to just generally keep things nice and fresh. I often layer this between steps. I'll often put a little bit, it's nice and um, sheer. You can just go straight over your makeup and it gives it a nice little dewy finish. Um, but ultimately, I just would really emphasise that you can get this redness under control. I know it's frustrating. There are steps you can take. If you keep a consistent routine, you're going to get there. Um, there are lots of recommendations and resources on the rest of my channels. So if you're watching this on Instagram, um, have a look in my IGTV videos and there's an option to pick a series. There's a rosacea series with makeup suggestions, uh, techniques of how to cover your redness using makeup, lots of different skin suggestions. If you're watching this on YouTube, there is a rosacea section on my channel with lots of videos there. If you're on my blog, if you're looking at my lipstick on my teeth, that makes two of us. If you're on my blog, there's a rosacea frequently asked questions post on the right hand side at the top. 
Um, but there you are. I hope that has cleared a few things up. And again, I'm sorry that I can't advise you personally on what's going to work for you. It is a tried and tested kind of thing. But these are all things that work for me. And um, all of these brands are very reactive on social media. So send them a message, tell them about your skin and they'll be happy to help. But I'm going to live and leave you because we're nearly at 15 minutes and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.